Hello. Malagayan Padating, our mission house here in Tanza. Our previous uh, session was interrupted. It must have been a technological glitch. We want to say uh, Buenos Dias to our friends in the Western Hemisphere and to all of our friends here in the Philippines. Uh, we are in 1 Kings uh, chapter 11. We're going to be looking at uh, verses 37 and 38. Uh, welcome to our prayer time and our Bible study time. Today we're going to be studying God's covenant with Jeroboam. God's covenant with Jeroboam. And uh, so I want you to feel free to share this with people with whom you think may benefit from this prayer time and this study time of God's covenant with Jeroboam. God's covenant with Jeroboam. Hello to our friends here in the Philippines. Hello to our friends uh, in the Western Hemisphere, our friends in uh, Cuba, in the United States, other nations. Hello to our friends in India and uh, several areas of uh, Asia. To our friends in Hong Kong, in, uh, in the Middle East, some in Saudi Arabia, some in Bahrain, different locations. I encourage you to turn in your Bible to 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 37 and 38. We're going to be talking about God's covenant or His promise to Jeroboam. We'll get into that in a moment. We want to begin with a, a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that uh, you do nothing by accident. Nothing is by coincidence. This has been arranged uh, by you. We thank you that your promise and your word tells us that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. We pray for your children who are joining us right now. We thank you again, Father, that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. There are people watching right now. You're not watching uh, by accident. Uh, this was intentional. So I encourage you to stay right where you are. We want to pray with you. My wife and I were missionaries of God the Father, the Almighty Maker and Possessor of heaven and earth, Jesus Christ. His only Son were under the anointing, the direction of the Holy Ghost. Uh, today, we want to pray uh, for many of you. We don't have our smartphone on, so I can't identify uh, you in the room right now, but you can uh, send your messages right here on this platform, and we will review your messages and we will uh, pray over your uh, prayer needs and hello we do understand that 
people watch our prayer time and our Bible study uh, in six different uh, continents, six different continents, several nations, several time zones. So uh, you know who you are, and our Father in heaven, He knows who you are too. And so, Father, uh, we pray that you open up the minds so that they can hear from you and uh, soak up the Word of God and apply it to their lives for today. We ask that your kingdom come and your will would be done in the life of your children today in the name of Jesus Christ we pray amen today we're uh, going to take time to study God's promise to Jeroboam the son of Nebat Jeroboam was a hard-working uh, leader. He was hard-working, he was industrious, and the Bible tells us that uh, Jeroboam, he was the governor of the house of Joseph. Now, Joseph was one of the sons of Israel, and, uh, but uh, his descendant, because of God's blessing upon the house of Joseph, uh, they were given two provisions. They were given two uh, blessings. The house of Israel, they were given uh, promises, uh, promises and allotment of land for the uh, for the children of Manasseh and also uh, Ephraim, so two, and so Jeroboam was governor over both houses, uh, both, uh, both provinces, uh, both of those tribes, they had one leader, the house of uh, Joseph, but it was comprised of the tribes of uh, Manasseh, and Ephraim. So uh, Jeroboam, he worked for Solomon. And Solomon was the son of David. He, it is said of him of the, in the word of God that Solomon was a wise man. Some people refer to him as the wisest human being on earth. Uh, you can read that about Solomon. It is said of him uh, during his lifetime and many Bible scholars will say that about uh, Solomon today. But the Bible tells us that uh, Solomon, he, uh, he must have thought he was smarter than God because he didn't abide by the the covenant that God had for Solomon. Yes, Solomon was used by God to uh, build the temple. He acquired uh, the gold and all and uh, many of the instruments uh, and the ingredients for the temple in Jerusalem. It was named after Solomon, Solomon's Temple. It, uh, a lot of the ingredients uh, were purchased from uh, the nation of Ophir, uh, which is the modern day uh, nation of the Philippines. Many of the ingredients, m much of uh, what was needed to build the temple in Jerusalem came from Ophir which is the modern nation of the 
Philippines. So Solomon was wise. He had uh, a lot of wisdom. He had a lot of knowledge. And uh, among other things, he was uh, a brilliant architect, uh, a brilliant uh, scholar. But uh, he he got he uh, he got too big for his britches. There are many people who have knowledge, but they don't have they but they tend to have the common they tend not to have the common sense to come in out of the rain. Uh, and so Solomon was had a lot of book smarts, he had a lot of wisdom, but he did not use it in the right way. He didn't uh, follow the word of God as David his father did. Uh, Solomon, um, he was bound and determined to do things the way he wanted to do it. You'll remember that in the book of Romans chapter 1, I believe about 19, uh, our Father in heaven, he says, uh, he says that uh, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and in righteousness of men or women who hold the truth, they possess the truth, they know the truth, but they make the decision to live an ungodly life instead. Jesus in John chapter 3, he Jesus tells us that um, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might believe, through Jesus, might be reconciled to him, have fellowship restored with God our Father. But Jesus went on, he goes on and says that uh, but some are condemned already because they have made the decision to do what is right in their own eyes instead of taking the Word of God or His teachings and apply them to their lives right away in their life. Now, this happens far too often. People, they understand the Word of God, they understand the gossip, a gospel, but they made the they make the decision to do what is right in their own eyes, and so Jesus says that these people are condemned already because they have chosen to live in darkness instead of the light because their deeds are evil, and uh, so. That's what the Bible tells us. This is teaching of Jesus that some people, uh, they do what they want to do even if they know it is wrong. They know that they can be uh, punished and judged by, by God the Father. <coughs> but uh, the Bible does tell us that there is sin, there's pleasure in sin for a season and so people have made the decision to live and do what they want to do regardless of the consequences and so uh, Solomon was one of these and he uh, the Bible tells us in uh, 1st Kings chapter 11 that Solomon loved many strange women and they turned his heart away from God and he pursued the activities and the hobbies and the spiritual 
direction of his wives and he uh, he built uh, uh, places of worship that were not to the Lord his heart was divided his heart was led astray from our Father in heaven and so because of this <coughs> because of this there were consequences and uh, it was prophesied that uh, that God would strip away ten tribes from the from Solomon's kingdom after his death that the kingdom would be stripped away one tribe would remain with uh, Rehoboam and the other ones the Bible uh, through uh, through the prophet he uh, he prophesied he promised Jeroboam that he would give him ten tribes these ten tribes uh, and this was the promise that God gave to Jeroboam the man who would uh, was anointed and selected to be king of Israel so <coughs> And um, let's look at, uh, because of the sin, let's look at, uh, because of Solomon's sin, we see in verse 35, 1 Kings 11, verse 35. And I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand his son's name was Rehoboam I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and give it unto you even ten tribes so he's speaking to Jeroboam I'm going to give you ten tribes Verse 36, And unto his son will I give one tribe. Now there were twelve tribes. There, uh, so here's how it went. Uh, the tribe of Levi, that was dedicated unto the Lord. The tribe of Levi, the sons of Aaron, were set up to be uh, in the office of the high priest or in the priesthood and the rest of the tribe of Levi they were dedicated to the things of the temple and uh, in uh, taking care of the uh, tribe of Levi so uh, they were not given a portion of land so they their lives gravitated around the holy, holy or around uh, the temple worship and uh, so <coughs> the other ten tribes uh, well they were wrestled away this would be all the tribes except for the tribe of Judah Judah and uh, the tribe that remained with them was the tribe of Benjamin. So Benjamin and Judah, they made up the kingdom of Judah. The kingdom of Judah was the portion of the 12 tribes that the two that remained with Rehoboam were the tribe of Judah and Benjamin. Uh, Levi was uh, the temple and the sons of Aaron were the high priest, office of the high priest. So uh, Judah was the line, uh, line through whom it was promised that Messiah 
would come. Messiah would come from the line of Judah. Benjamin remained loyal with Judah. And so uh, the other ones were given to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Uh, because uh, because of uh, the sin of Solomon, Solomon refused to repent. And it's at verse 37. And I will take you. He's talking to Jeroboam. I will take you and you shall reign according to all that your soul desires and you shall be king over Israel. Brothers and sisters, our Father in the Word of God through the uh, blood of Jesus, He has given you the ability to reign. To reign in your home and to have your own, to take care of your own household. There's, when uh, Jesus uh, told us to pray, He said, uh, Our Father, who art in heaven hallowed be thy name you worship God our father wants you to worship him thy kingdom come believers should ask our father in heaven every day that his kingdom come and his will be done in your life as it is in heaven but in your life today see when you are a child when you become a child of God you can be adopted into the family of God Jesus gives you the permission he gives you the right to be adopted into the family of God but you have to be born again there needs to be a rebirth in your life and so from that point forward when you've been born again you should establish a prayer life and you should have a private time of prayer where you can get along with God and you come to God the Father through the permission the boldness of uh, Jesus Christ his son Jesus uh, gives the children of God the the boldness he gives you the authority to come boldly before our Father in heaven he gives you the right to come into the presence of the king on a daily basis. He teaches us, give us this day our daily bread. You, get, you have permission to come into the throne room of God our Father. You have access to Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Messiah. So as a, as a believer, as a child of God, as someone who has been born again, you are granted access, permission to come boldly into the throne of God our Father. And it is wise to ask that His kingdom come and his will to be done in your life on a daily basis. <coughs> You'll remember that Adam walked with God in the cool of the day in the garden. And uh, through Jesus Christ, 
you have communion that is restored. You have communion, fellowship with God our Father that is restored by Jesus Christ His Son. That is why He gives you the uh, authority to call God our Father. And you seek His kingdom to come in your life every day that you can enjoy uh, benefits of being a child of God in your life today, every day. Seek Him daily. It's a daily walk with God. And you ask that His kingdom come in your life to know more of His Word every day and that His will would be done in your life every day. Yes, your walk with our Father in Heaven needs to be a daily walk. It needs to be a daily commitment. Uh, your Father in Heaven, He wants to talk to you every day. He wants to enjoy your presence every day. So, um, as a, a child of God, if you've been born again, he tells us if any man or woman be in Christ, he becomes a new creation, creation or new creature. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. In Jesus, you have a brand new life. Your heart is reborn. Uh, you can't make it to heaven unless you were born again. Uh, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, that there is none righteous, no, not one. You have to die to yourself, and you have to be born again. Your heart has to be regenerated. Your heart needs to be clean before our God and if if you have uh, sin in your life you need to repent of that sin every day you should uh, have a clean heart before God you should be clean before the Lord ask him to forgive you of your sin but he says if it shall be uh, that uh, I will give you all that your soul desires and you shall be king over Israel. And it shall be, verse 38, if thou will hearken, that's an old English word for listen. English has changed. Uh, since 1611. English has changed the way it is written. has changed drastically from 1611 until the modern day of today. The English language has, has changed. Many of you who prefer the King James Version well, if you look at a copy of the King James Version from 1611, you would see that language has changed a ton. The way that King James English was written in 1611 until the modern day, you probably could not read the English and the way it was written in 1611 from an actual copy because the, ang the English language has changed a lot in the way it is written down, the way it is copied. You would find a hard time reading a uh, manuscript from 1611. So, uh, but 
that if you will hearken or listen unto all that I command thee and uh, will walk in my ways according to the word of God as the Holy Spirit leads you walk in my ways and do that do that is uh, right in my sight to keep my statutes the word of God and the commandments as David my servant did that I will build thee a sure house you'll be building on a sure foundation a solid foundation and as I built for David and I will give Israel unto thee. And I will not, I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. There will be punishment for the seed of David, but it's not eternal punishment. It's not eternal. It's temporary. God is going to keep his promise with the descendants of David. Going to keep his promises to the kingdom of Israel. And so, if you are a child of God, the more closely that you follow the word of God, the closer you stick with the shepherd, the better your uh, benefits will be. And so uh, the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we also read that uh, that in Isaiah, uh, he tells us in chapter uh, 59 that Sin can affect the communion that we have with God our Father. In fact, we see this again in the first epistle of John, chapter 1. God is light, our Father is light, and in Him there is no darkness at all. So we see that the the language the rules haven't changed but the way he communicates the language uh, are, are communicated uh, so that we can understand more clearly now we see that the promise was good for uh, Jeroboam the promise that uh, God gave to uh, Jeroboam was a good promise. It was a uh, a very good uh, promise. But um, we see that uh, we see that uh, in chapter 12, Judges chapter 12, it uh, even though. God kept his promise to King Jeroboam and quickly made him king that it did not take Jeroboam very long to break the covenant that God had made with Jeroboam and to his seed. We're not going to get into it today but God quickly fulfilled his promise with Jeroboam but even though God quickly kept his word to Jeroboam Jeroboam was concerned he doubted the God that made him king he doubted the word of God, even though God had had shown his faithfulness. He brought his word to pass quickly in 
the life of Jeroboam. He quickly became king. God gave him a kingdom, not just one tribe. God gave him ten tribes. And even though God kept his word to Jeroboam and made him king over ten tribes, Jeroboam had difficulty. He had a problem believing God's word to keep his promises. Even though the promises had been fulfilled, he still doubted God's word and his ability to keep that promise for his children and his descendants that would follow. Brothers and sisters, there are many, probably too many, uh, out there now. God has made promises to you. In fact, Jesus tells us, uh, blessed are those who have not seen or not seen the manifestation of all of those promises yet. Blessed are those who have not yet seen the manifestation and still believe. Some people only believe when they receive. But Jesus said there is a better blessing for those who believe even though they have not yet seen the manifestation of the promise yet. There are some of you that fall into uh, both camps. Uh, there are some of you who are still believing and have not had full revelation, full manifestation yet. That would be most Believers don't have full manifestations. Uh, so we have partial revelation. You have to trust God uh, for the future. He tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, uh, verse 8, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Our Father does not give us promise of complete, total revelation about everything in our future. For we, now we see through a glass darkly, see the future for human beings. We have partial revelation, what God chooses to reveal to us in His Word and uh, but people don't have complete total uh, revelation they don't understand everything so different people have different revelations but no one other than our father in heaven has complete and total revelation the word of god tells us that there are some details with regard to the future that our Father in Heaven <coughs> chooses to keep for Himself. For example, He tells us that uh, no man knows the day or the hour. Only the Father in Heaven knows the day or the hour of the rapture of the church or the day of the Lord. There is some information that our Father reserves for Himself. He keeps the information. He gives you portions. And part of your revelation is good, but another may have more revelation. You still don't have complete revelation, but you have more revelation uh, than on your own. So we're taught to 
studied to show yourself approved and we stick to the Word of God uh, we look into the future and we see types and shadows but the future would be too harsh for us as human beings to look into the future with complete total knowledge it would be too harsh it would be too heavy for us to look into the future uh, and so therefore uh, we can see uh, through uh, like a filtered light he filters the sun like if you're driving to the east at sunrise the glare is too strong uh, and so you have to have a you have to have a lens you have to have a filter so that you can drive in a more capable way to the east and so with the uh, Lord you he gives us sunglasses he gives us men and women of God the Bible shows us that uh, he gives us leaders to help us to understand the future in our walk with God we have our best God right here the Word of God and he's given us pastors apostles prophets teachers to help us to learn the Word of God and the Bible tells us that we should begin to teach children yes start teaching them from the time that they are young start teaching your children how to hear from God as they learn to hear from you you teach them to hear from you and you teach them to hear from God you teach them to pray like you teach them how to hear from their parents you begin to teach them you train up a child in the way he should go and when he is older he is least likely to depart from it and so uh, we got promises in the Word of God and we need to take the Word of God and apply it right away to our lives Jesus teaches that the wise will apply the word his teachings to their lives right away and that those are are like those who build their house upon the rock a firm foundation but those who think that you're so smart uh, you can put off applying the Word of God to your life right away those uh, Jesus tells us are the foolish who build their house upon sand less than solid rock and when the storms come great will be the collapse because they did not build upon solid rock because they did not apply his teachings to our lives right away brothers and sisters our time is quickly departing we're going to pray uh, for people right now father god uh, we ask that you help us to take your word and apply it to our lives today Lord uh, that you give us men and women of God who help us to uh, learn the Bible and apply the Bible to our lives right now you teach us so that we can train up a child 
in the way that they should go teach them from the word of God you teach us that uh, we should teach our children in the morning we should teach them at breakfast teach them at in the afternoon or in the noontime and that uh, we should teach them with our lifestyles to live like Jesus to take the Word of God and apply it to their lives and their education Lord that we should acknowledge you in all of our ways in all of our ways so that you can guide our footsteps the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord Lord we uh, thank you Lord we pray for those with illness or with uh, disease and those fighting depression emotional depression but also financial depression those seeking uh, jobs careers homes father god we uh, we know that in this life we wrestle not not we don't really wrestle with flesh and blood but against principalities and powers the rulers of the darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in high places we pray for physical disease infirmity that that doesn't come from God Lord that doesn't come from you good things come from God and bad things come from the devil Lord we take authority according to your word uh, over the uh, bad things in our life Lord we confess our sins we we ask that you take authority we ask you to help us every day of our life to reject that which is evil and choose the good and perfect things that come down from the Father Lord because you uh, don't tempt your children with evil Lord but every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father we want to seek the good and the perfect in your life in uh, for our lives every day we choose the good things of your kingdom every day the beginning of our lives we uh, every day we choose to live for you every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father we know that in you is light and there is no darkness no evil at all Father, we, uh, we know that you give us weapons that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Lord, help us to renew our strength in you. Help us to wait upon the Lord, to wait upon you, to wait upon God. Father, that we want your kingdom to come in our lives every day. That we want your plan for our life today, every day. And uh, may your kingdom come in our lives today. Let us choose to make the better choices. And your kingdom and your will be done in our lives every day that we uh, pray without ceasing that we testify that we brag on Jesus Christ your son because you are so good 
and you've promised signs following those who brag on you. Lord, we pray that you help us every day to let your light shine before men. Let our talents glorify you in heaven so they can glorify our Father which is in heaven. And we give to you all of the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory because it all belongs to you. We give it to you, Father God. And those who need to be born again, Lord, that just for them to cry out to you, Father, help me to understand this. I want to be born again. I want to live according to your word. I want to apply your word to my life today. You've promised to uh, pour out your spirit upon me. And you've promised to make known your words unto me. Lord, I want this to be born again. Help me every day good teachers every day help me to choose the good and to stay away from the evil help me father god you've promised the holy ghost to help me we thank you and i receive that in advance and I need your help every day as I study your word every day and apply it to my heart that I might not sin against you, less likely to sin because your word has been applied to my heart. <coughs> we thank you, Father, that you always hear us you're, you always hear your children when we cry out to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, you contact us on this uh, platform. We can help you to find a good church or good pastors. Uh, in different areas throughout the world. Just contact us on this platform. And if you, uh, if you want to help us uh, in our uh, work to brag on Jesus, to lead more people to the Lord, you contact us on this platform. And... Uh, we can give you information and uh, if you want to you can be some of the most important because you help us to pay the bills the gospel is free but the cost is real it costs money the internet costs money uh, radio or television it costs money to, uh, to pack up the jeepney and to uh, go to different communities to brag on Jesus. Diesel energy costs money. Uh, gas and oil that cost money. To take uh, food into a community to feed some of the hungry that cost money and you can be if you can't come you can come and help us to pay the bills you'd be very important and we appreciate all of you uh, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow in about 23 hours
hasta mañana. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Dios Libendega, may God bless you. And uh, wherever you go, via con Dios, may God be with you. And we look forward to hearing and seeing your response right here on this platform. Via con Dios, may God be with you.